morning. I'm just going to take you through how to uh, get up and running with GarageBand in a pretty quick manner. So the first thing you're going to want to do, this is a brand new GarageBand installation, brand new file. So we're going to want to turn off this 1, 2, 3, 4 and the metronome. Otherwise your finished product will have a metronome like click running through the background which is less than optimal. The second thing we're going to do is we're going to over here where you can see the metronome again we are going to change it from beats and projects to time. And the reason we do this is because if you are listening to your raw audio and you make a note that you know someone coughed say at the one minute mark then when you import the audio you can just zip right to the one minute mark um, over here in your actual uh, time stamps. So let's go ahead and grab some audio. Uh, let's see where we put some nice audio. I'm going to go to the finder and I'm going to grab, just downloaded this off of SoundCloud. So let's just pick that up and drag it into GarageBand. Okay, don't need my finder window. And you can see that GarageBand has uh, created a new track. These gray bars indicate separate tracks. So let's go ahead and hide the library button, Mr. Library. Let's go ahead and hide it for now because we don't really need it. We want to be able to see our audio. So now when you look at your basic audio screen, you can see that it's been set up with timestamps rather than beats. And you can see that you've got this track listing right here that will give you some idea of uh, so, What's going uh, on? you play Minecraft with this club? There you go. So, that, that's my uh, audio of an interview. Um, maybe I want to uh, take out the bit right here where I um, introduce the interviewee to the subject. So, what I'm going to do is when you are have the thing, have the track highlighted, woo! Uh, you will then be able to uh, hover your cursor over and notice my cursor's changed. It's now a bracket with these two arrows. Okay, and whoop, what I can do is I can just scooch that uh, bracketed cursor over and now what's happened is that this portion of the audio has been deleted. So it's been clipped out. Okay, so now when I start it, takes off that beginning question of mine. But maybe you wanted to keep that question. So you've always got your um, uh, command undo. Maybe I want to keep that question, but I, I might want to just uh, scooch out this little area right here where perhaps I was, I was saying way too many ums. Let's look at a, an easy way to do that. So what you're going to do is, um, this is your, your time bar cursor. You can put it right here for where you might think you want to take some stuff out. What we're going to do is use this command split regions at the playhead. Okay, so I've split my regions. Now when you move your playhead marker, you'll notice you've got two separate audio files. So move that playhead marker again. We'll just assume this part here is, is me saying a lot of ums. Move that playhead again and we go back in. Split the regions at the playhead again. Okay, now you've got three separate audio files. One, two, three, and you can just highlight that second one that you want to move. Tap the delete key and it's gone. So then you can just scoot your audio, remaining audio back together. And so in that way you can, um, you can chop out uh, various types of audio. You can make edits in the middle of your audio files and you've seen how when you're highlighting, when you're hovering over um, a track, your cursor will turn into the clipper so you can then just make really finite adjustments. Over here in this top right, you can actually change the uh, scale of what you're working with. So now look, the amount of area you have to work with within the context of a second, which can be a pretty long time when you're podcasting. That's actually become quite a bit larger. It can become larger still. So you've got a lot of room to work within, you know, making very small adjustments. And then as your project grows and you're, you've made all of your adjustments and you want to see all of your various items, you can squish your timeline back down. So now you can see this has become five seconds as opposed to where before we have it out like here, you can see it become, you know, the length of one second.
So we have uh, made some edits to our audio. We've done a little bit of clipping. What if we want to insert a sound effect? GarageBand has a number of inborn sound effects. So what we want to do is you want to go into your view menu. You want to show the media browser. Woo, there it is. So uh, let's see. We have got um, some podcasts happening there. We've got some iTunes. Um, we've got uh, all of my iTunes stuff. So um, these are all of GarageBand uh, items I've already made. So if I know, for instance, I wanted uh, to clip in a little bit of audio from, say, my interview with uh, my interview with a digital artist. You know, she was talking about something that made sense for Minecraft. I could load that up. Uh, but you can also just grab sound effects. Over here, there is something that looks like a little loop. It's actually the Apple Loops button, and um, it will give you a number of uh, sound effects that are just come standard with GarageBand. So um, let's see, you could have these uh, little loops down here that are sort of, uh, let's grab this. What is 44th Street? When you grab it, just drag it over to your project and you can see that GarageBand will create uh, a new track for it. So, and again, that's, that's pretty, pretty, pretty long maybe. So we can highlight it, hover over it, and squish it down with our uh, clipper. So then you move your playhead to see what it sounds like. This club. Clearly, that's not the one that you would use right there. So you can just, as it's highlighted, you can just delete it right out of there. But then you can go back into your Apple Loops browser and take a look and see what what are some other what are some other uh, sound effects that might make more sense. Would a cartoon chipmunk make more sense here? Probably not, but it gives you an idea of like of some of the uh, the options that you have. Cartoon symbol hits, and you can preview them over in this media browser area. A cartoon boing is almost always appropriate, so that's a great one to have at hand. Party horn. So there are absolutely tons in here. Um, and this is just sort of the, the general one you can uh, restrict it if you know you you're looking up at here you know you just want a tambourine you just want percussion um, or you can uh, go by what uh, type of mood you're hoping for it's a, you want everything that that is labeled by garage band is cheerful you can restrict it t t in that manner so this is just a brief overview into the things that GarageBand can do it's a pretty powerful piece of software for making podcasts um, I am always happy to answer more questions about podcasts and GarageBand. Uh, I totally dig them. They are my jam. So if you have any questions, give me, give me an email at audrey at tarrantinstitute.org. And I will be listening for the stuff you guys create.